what do you think? It was probably global pressure that actually allowed him to walk out on bail. But what happens next? I think there was global pressure. The scrutiny of international media and the business community really mattered. You know, if my friend Sam Zell there were to weigh in, he might once again refer to this as a, uh, a steaming crock of, um, I couldn't hear it. My earpiece is coming in. I think bleep. he said porridge, <laughs> porridge maybe. Yes. Uh, it might be said porridge or oatmeal. Is um, that this is a gross uh, injustice. It was ridiculous to arrest this guy on such specious charges. And uh, they, there, was, there was a compensation issue of money he never received that was going before the board that would perhaps equalize him with other global uh, automakers. He's done a remarkable job in this federation that he put together as they rescued Nissan from near collapse. Uh, Nissan kind of resents it. They got a 44 percent stake that <coughs> Renault did in, in Nissan at the time. And uh, clearly there's some Japanese uh, nationalistic resentment that the CEO of Nissan, who was reporting to Ghosn, resented. Uh, and uh, this was sort of a coup. It's a distortion of, of, of Japan Inc. You know, this kind of you could title this going, going, gone in terms of <laughs> Japan Inc. This was a ridiculous so way Carlos for the Gone government. Were to... Japanese, Jeff, this whole thing might not have happened to the degree that it's happened. Yeah, Michelle, I couldn't Melissa. I couldn't uh, scream out more from the top of the mountain how right you are. There are people are saying, oh, this is U.S. should get used to it. The West should get used to it. This is just the Japanese system, how it functions. And shame on us for not understanding their 99.9% .9 conviction rate, which is the same as Russia or, or China's. Well, there's more it's to it. Uh, is that, is that the, the, the Tokyo Electric Power Company executives who uh, were being held responsible for failure to, to you know, prepare for that, that horrendous uh, meltdown, 100,000 people relocated, 44 people died, even now. While they have convictions before, they, have, there's not, they haven't been sentenced. Eight years later, and they're not held, uh, and they're still denying their culpability. They're not being held uh, hostage, as it's called, you know, like a roach motel justice system. Check in, you can't check out. They've been let out. Carlos Ghosn, up until now, has been held in solitary confinement. He, he would, the one time he went into court, he had to have a rope around his neck and, and ankle bracelets or, uh, or uh, handcuffs on. I mean, who did he murder? Uh, what, what product safety issues were there with it? Nothing. This was absolutely r ridiculous. And, and, you know, I'm not saying that maybe he didn't make some mistakes. Uh, you know, there's some question about some houses that, that, that the company owned and that uh, he was benefiting from. But, but who, you know, this is not the way you, you, you deal with a, a, a business investigation. Meanwhile, their partner... Uh, Renault has not been able to see any of the evidence uh, that, that somehow the Japanese government working apparently in, in collaboration with uh, Nissan has kept hidden away. They resented the 44 percent ownership and the French, the Renault is about 15 percent owned by the French government. And frankly, uh, uh, Nissan has recovered so well that they're making two million more cars a year, selling them two million more cars a year. Uh, than Renault, so they probably resented some of this. But it, it's uh, people are very worried in, in the U.S. business community in terms of what this meant. And I think uh, the damage to Nissan is considerable. Hard attracting people in there right now. They haven't replaced uh, Gone in terms of the Nissan Renault relationship. Uh, and, and of course, uh, poor Carlos Gone was released uh, from his CEO position. Sadly, I think that uh, you know there's really, frankly, I think a much bigger question. And I think that much bigger question is the one that I responded to. And I said to myself, gee, would I want to be an American businessman going into Japan today? Uh, what about the two Canadians that were arrested in China? Uh, what, you know, how are we going to end up uh, with globalized trade if executives are afraid of going from one country to another to transact? I mean, the, no, whole, ghost, the whole ghost and story and, and, uh, and the car companies is interesting. But the really bigger question is, are we materially reducing everybody's willingness to travel? You know, if you were a Canadian today, would you go to China? No. Neither no, would and, I. And, and, no. Neither would I. And, and Sam and I are the only ones perhaps on the show old enough to remember that in the late 70s, the early 80s, you couldn't go into a business, let alone a business school classroom, without having to read the Japan that can say no and the art of Japanese management and all these books celebrating the brilliance of the Japanese business government collaboration for Japan, Inc. 
Well, here's the downside of it, is the Financial Times actually released and, showed, and reviewed the documents showing that the company was, in fact, working with the government on this takedown, on this private conspiracy. Sam is right. 75% of CEOs tell us now that they are more nervous about their international travel. And reciprocally, Sam, it's not just you know, so perhaps Canada detaining uh, the uh, Chinese executives, but it's China sort of detaining, as, you, as I guess you referred to it, the, the Canadian executives. We had, and we also have uh, a, quite a number of U.S. CEOs, U.S. citizens, perhaps dual citizens, unable to return to the U.S. from China. And, and that's why we saw China, that the U.S. State Department put out a tri travel advisory, uh, an escalated level two, warning people. This is, does put a damper on global commerce a lot more than, than trade issues, than, than tariff issues, that is, if uh, you're afraid to even travel there to work out deals. And it's, uh, it's, it's really worrisome. But isn't there even a bigger ethics issue? And, and, and that ethics issue is that, uh, I mean, should you sit there and be afraid of going to Japan and being afraid of going to Iran? It seems as though I, the standards I, I say, are yes. the same what? in both places. Uh, you people, know, it's fun. Go ahead, Jeff. Oh, it's funny, Sam. You were saying in the earlier block about something we need to work on as business leaders now re-engage with this administration is how we do a good job of separating out uh, our relations with our friends and our enemies. I completely agreed with that until we talk about Carlos Ghosn. It seems that, that the old maxim about keeping your friends close and your enemies closer mm -hmm. may not make sense in this case. We thought Japan was our friend and, yeah. and look at how they're treating the West.